This is a rerun of a presentation I gave at 2024 DVB World. My name is Martin Gold and I'm a principal architect at UView. I'm going to describe DVB targeted advertising with a brief overview of the specifications that DVB has developed and some scenarios for their use. DVB's focus for targeted advertising has been ad replacement or substitution on linear services. The ad in the broadcast stream becomes the default ad, and if a replacement is appropriate for the targeting to the receiving device, a different ad is shown, hopefully for exactly the same time as the broadcast ad it is replacing. This is the kind of problem where DVB can help by providing standards to assist interoperability between streams and the receiving devices. The insertion of ads into video on demand was already well established by the time of the DVB work. The term dynamic ad insertion, which is appropriate to VOD, is often also applied to the substitution of ads on linear services. DVB has been more precise in its terminology, referring specifically to dynamic ad substitution or DAS but there are other names around, such as addressable linear advertising and dynamic ad replacement. Another piece of confusing terminology is the reference to client side and server side, as if it describes the complete solution. In reality, different aspects may be performed on one side or the other, and we'll look at that more specifically for some system scenarios that represent the main use cases that DVB has been considering. DVB has developed three specifications for targeted advertising. The first of these covers how to provide signaling to identify and precisely locate to the frame an individual ad spot or a whole break. There is an established specification in the industry called SCTE 35. However, this is a complex specification with many options. DVB has profiled the use of SCT 35 for DVB's targeted advertising. The specification also profiles the companion SCT specification 104, which covers the control messages to an encoder that will generate the SCT 35 messages. DVB defines three ways of carrying the messages to support differing types of receive equipment. The first is the native MPEG method using the MPEG section container. The second method uses the SCT 35 message in a DSMCC stream event. This is particularly useful for HBB TV receivers as the app can access stream event data but does not have access to MPEG sections. The specification also supports two different timelines available to HBB TV apps, PTS and TEMI. Finally, a method is specified for carrying the SCT35 data in a compact form in audio and video watermarking. I will describe scenarios using each of these methods in the presentation. The second specification is an Etsy technical report, which provides guidelines for a reference architecture using an ad decision server operating to the IAB video ad serving template or VAST specification. VAST is an industry standard for ad decision servers used in VOD advertising but it can also be applied to linear services. The VAST response includes the URLs for advert media together with the messages to be sent to record impressions and tracking data. These indicate how much of which ad has been shown by a client device. The VAST format also supports redirects to allow other ad decision servers to respond to a request. The guidelines explain the use of VAST and also discuss the issues when working with received devices with differing capabilities and how content and ad media should be prepared for the best results. The latest specification, which will become part three of the DVB trilogy of targeted advertising specifications, is currently a DVB blue book. It covers signaling in DASH. Since DASH is a unicast protocol, in this case, the specification is applicable to both server side and client side operation. Again, the signaling is based on SCT35 messages, but this time they are conveyed in DASH events 
in the manifest file. The timing of information in the SCT35 messages is not directly meaningful in Dash, and the specification explains how they are related to the Dash presentation timing. Multi-period Dash is particularly useful for server-side ad substitution. This topic is covered both in this specification and in the DVB Dash specification, which profiles use of MPEG Dash in DVB systems. The Dash signaling specification also describes a standard method for client-side reporting that can be used with server-side ad substitution. Now onto the scenarios. The first of these is my favourite, as it is the one that UView has implemented in collaboration with ITV and Channel 4 in the UK. There is more about that system implementation in the March 2024 edition of DVB Scene. This scenario has broadcast receivers in which the DAS software can access MPEG sections, so uses the native SCT35 section format for signaling. The DVB guidelines are relevant for the use of vast ad decision servers, the impression and tracking responses from the receiver, and for the ad media preparation. They also describe the conditioning of the broadcast stream to improve the splicing. Looking at where the main functions are performed, we have a pattern that is common to most of the scenarios. The content splicing to replace the broadcast ad is necessarily performed in the client, as is the reporting back to the server and potentially other ad tracking server servers. However, the ad decision logic is server side. In this second scenario, the target receivers are HBB TV devices, either smart TVs or set-top boxes. As mentioned earlier, the appropriate signaling for these uses DSMCC stream events. The HBB TV implementation needs to support the HBB TV targeted advertising specification. This adds a fast media switch API, enabling the HBB TV app to manage the splicing between broadcast and ad. The communication with the ad decision server and subsequent reporting is performed by the app following the DVB guidelines. The split between server and client side operations is the same as in the previous scenario. The third scenario utilizes the third type of signaling for target advertising specified by DVB. In this case, there is an HBB TV smart TV, but it is not receiving the service directly but instead via an HDMI input connected to the output of a set-top box. The idea here is that the set-top box itself is not capable of targeted advertising. The signaling is conveyed by audio and video watermarking with an HBB TV smart TV supporting watermarking solutions that have, that have been specified by ATSC. The same DVB and HBB TV specifications are used as in the previous HBB TV scenario with the addition of the phase two version of the HBB TV specification for application discovery over broadband or ADB2. This is the first of two scenarios with Dash. In this one, the system has the same split of functions between server and client as the previous scenarios. The stream delivery is Dash, so there is only an internet connection to the client. The DVB Dash signaling specification covers how to convey SCT35 in Dash events in the manifest. This is based on another SCT specification, SCTE214. The DVB guidelines are again relevant to the use of the Ad Decision Server and Ad Media formats. As Dash implies unicast delivery, we also consider server-side ad substitution. The Dash signaling specification defines client-side reporting that can be used in this case. The DVB profiling of signaling is relevant to a server-side interface between the encoder producing Dash and the DAS server. Similarly, the DAS server is likely to operate with a vast ad decision server for which the DVB guidelines will be applicable. The Dash manifest is modified by the DAS server to describe the specific ad substitutions for each client. 
Technically, this is then server-side ad, ad substitution, but the simplest approach for the server is to create a multi-period manifest so that the ad does not need to be modified for each substitution. This then means that the client has to handle a more complex multi-period stream and is actually performing the stitching together of the program and ad content, according to the description in the manifest. That concludes this whistle-stop tour of the DBB targeted advertising specifications and the scenarios for their use. Thank you.